Welcome to today's technology case study. So today we'll be discussing dividing wall columns, but before I explain what a dividing wall column is, let's first by start by talking about the problem that this was developed to solve. And that problem is separation of a ternary mixture via distillation. Let me just highlight that here. And so by ternary mixture, me, we mean a mixture that has three or more components. And we're separating this via distillation, so it's on the basis of relative volatility differences between those three components. So let's name those components for, um, for convenience. So we'll have a light component, we'll have a middle boiling component, and then we'll have a heavy component. And let's give those names uh, for convenience. So unimaginatively, we will call them A, B, and C. And a very common example, actually, of this from industry is what's called uh, BTX, so separation of BTX, where B stands for benzene, T stands for toluene, and then X stands for xylene. So these are three aromatic molecules. This is very common to petroleum refining and petrochemicals. Um, these are each aromatics, if you remind yourself. So benzene is a ring. Toluene is that same aromatic ring plus one carbon. And then xylene is that same ring plus a second carbon. And there are a few isomers. I'll just draw one of them. So separating of these three components, where xylene is really a mixture of the three isomers. And this is very important industrially. Uh, if you just look at refining, about 50 to 60% of the energy at a refinery is used in distillation. So here we're talking about energy. Uh, if you were to cast a broader net and look at chemicals and refining, sort of both those industries together, it would still be quite large, maybe 40 to 60%. And then if you were to look globally across all industries and not just manufacturing, but all energy consumption globally on the planet, distillation still responsible for about 3% of the total. So an incredibly important process and one that warrants uh, definitely some further investigation. So how are ternary mixtures separated today? So today this is typically done using what's called a direct sequence of columns. So it requires two columns. Um, in sequence to be able to separate those three components. So if we have our mixture here of A, B, and C coming in, we have our light component A coming out of the distillate of the first, B and C going to the second, and then B coming out the distillate of the second, and C coming out at the bottom. So this works quite well and it's been used you know, quite extensively. Uh, but there is a challenge with this approach, and it has to do with the, the uh, thermodynamics and inefficiencies associated with uh, these two columns in sequence. So let's start actually by looking at the second column here. I'll label them. And if we were to draw a plot of uh, the component B mole fraction versus column height, that would look something like this. So this is for column two, which is what you might expect. This is just a binary mixture by the time we get to column two. But now if we were to look at column one, it looks quite different. It would look something like this for column one, where we actually have a higher concentration of B here in the middle of the column. We have no way of accessing it, but it's higher there than it is at the bottom. And there's a significant amount of remixing that goes on as you get closer to the bottom of the column. And this remixing is responsible for some thermodynamic inefficiency that we would like to avoid. Now you might be asking yourself, well, what about adding a side cut off of the, the first column here to try and take advantage of that? And there are some applications when you can do that, but not when you require very crisp separation of each of the three components because you will have some of your feed stream bleeding through into that side cut. So now let's get to um, um, the real meat of today's conversation, which is 
looking at ways to intensify this approach and, and move beyond that direct sequence. So again, let's um, label our charts here. We have A, B, and C coming in. A at the top, B and C here, and then finally B and C. So an alternative to that is what's called a, a Petliot column, where again, we'll have a same mixture A, B, and C coming in. Uh, we use a prefractionator, uh, which I'll just label P, and we don't really try and get a very clean, a very high purity separation of A, but rather we have a mixture of A and B here. And then at the bottom, we have again some B with also some C, primarily C, but with some B coming out of the, the bottom of that prefractionator. And then when we do this, we're able to get that very clean, crisp separation of the three components that we're looking for in a way that's more thermodynamically efficient. And now finally getting to the dividing wall column, this is essentially a way of putting this Petliot column into one vessel. So we have A, B, C again, A, B, and C coming out. Uh, the prefractionator, which was a separate vessel, is now inside the column. And we've well, the only thing that was done to accomplish this is to add this dividing wall into the column internals here which is separating the feed side from the product side. So quite a clever way to get the same function in a, a simpler piece of equipment and combine different vessels and different functions into one. So if we were to look at intensification, um, you know, process intensification being the mission space of RAPID, um, it's increasing as we go along in this direction. So a bit more about how this works. So again, um, I just wanted to highlight the fact that you have some options when designing these columns and there's some helpful rules of thumb, uh, you know, in terms of how they are designed. You have choices for where this dividing wall is located. It can be moved uh, left to right. It doesn't have to be in the center. It can also be moved top to bottom, um, even all the way um, to the top of the column or at the bottom. Um, you also have... Um, um, design choices about where exactly along the head of the column your side stream is located and there's some helpful rules of thumb and here's a picture that shows the the internals of the column this is for a trade column example uh, it, this can be used for either pack columns or trade columns so there are choices to be made there and um, it's really um, quite an interesting quite an elegant solution not one that works in all cases um, you know, definitely some rules of thumb to look at to determine whether or not this would fit for a particular case. One example of when this might not be a good choice is when you, the utilities that are required for those two columns in the conventional sequence need to be at very different temperatures. For example, your steam for your reboiler needs to be at very different temperatures or your cooling water for your condenser. Um, another example of when this might not work is when the the pressure for those two columns in the two column sequence needed to be very different. You know, now because you're you're doing all of this in one vessel, you've lost that deg extra degree of freedom to have a different pressure in each column. So those are some things that um, needed to be considered and they're actually quite common when we look at process intensification as a whole. So has this been adopted by industry? So the answer is yes. Uh, dividing wall columns are one of the more mature examples of PI technology. So looking out here uh, where we have the most recent data, there were about 150 installations as of 2010. These are from uh, two different data sets. One's a specific installer uh, called uh, Months, Julius Months, and then this is data for all installers here from two different sources. So it's, it's been um, quite heavily used. Um, and if you were to extrapolate this data out to today in 2021, you might expect that you'd have over 800 of these columns based on these growth rates. So what has the outcome been for installation of this type of column? So again, going back to the BTX example, starting from a mixture of 30% benzene 30% toluene, and then the balance, 40% xylene, and going to a mixture that is 
at least 99% of each of those three components. There was a very nice case study that was done for this example, and that case study found that the magic number was 30%. Um, so the energy reduction going from the conventional case to the DWC, the dividing wall column case, was 30%. The reduction in capital cost was also 30%. And then the reduction of what's called TAC, total annual cost, was also 30%. So 30% is a handy number to remember when thinking about dividing wall columns and what the impact on both energy and cost can be for this particular example of a PI uh, process intensified technology.